Good morning and welcome to our family service for the parish of Dacre with Hartwith and Darley with Thornthwaite. A um, little bit of an experiment this morning in, in a number of different ways, but however it works out, we can gather together to worship God, to give thanks, to pray, um, to be together in his name, even though we can't physically be together. Um, that's not a problem for God. Um, today is Father's Day. Um, that's not particularly the theme of our service today, um, but I did pick the first song with that in mind. Um, Father God, I wonder how I manage to exist without the knowledge of your parenthood, knowing that God is our Father. How do we manage before we even knew that? Um, God loves us so much, and Jesus taught us to call God, even though God is so huge, and we'll think a bit about that later. He taught us to call God Father, in his language, Abba, even. Um, quite a like Daddy, actually. Um, our first song, Father God, I Wonder. Praises I will sing your praises I 
start our thoughts today by reading a short couple of verses from the Bible. Now, we can, I, I will read it myself this week, but just the thought I had this week was, why don't you record yourself doing our Bible reading for the week? If anybody's interested in doing that, um, let me know whether you be young or old. It might just add a different voice into our things and maybe we can play it on another device into the microphone of the iPad. I don't know. We're, we're experimenting as we go along. But this is a reading from Matthew's Gospel, the words of Jesus. He's giving um, a series of teachings to his disciples and the crowds. And he said to them this, Are not two sparrows sold for just a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. The hairs of your head are all counted. Do you think Jesus meant by that, that we have a little number on each one of our hairs? Somewhere microscopically, that would be rather odd, wouldn't it? I don't think he meant that at all. But what did he mean? Um, he meant God knows you that well. He even knows how many hairs there are on your head. Now, I don't think God has a chart where he writes down how many hairs there are on everybody's head. Again, I think that would be a little bit silly. But how many hairs do you think are on your head? Um, I wouldn't recommend trying to count. Um, if you could even work it out, you would probably find that you'd have more fell out as you were counting before you got to the end. Um, the average human head, I am told, has about 100,000 hairs on it. Now, I might have slightly less than some. Um, in lockdown, you might think you've got slightly more than usual. Um, that's quite possible. Um, a lot of us need a haircut. Um, but Jesus said, God knows you that well. A hundred thousand hairs? Well, who can count that? But that's not a big number to God. Now, numbers are all around us. Um, how many different numbers might you see around you during the day? Um, and where might you see them? Perhaps you can have a think. You might see them in lists. Yes, I've got a list over there. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, uh, page numbers in books, um, in sums when you're doing your homework, um, serial numbers on items, uh, dates, telling the time on a clock, book titles on computer keyboards, and there could be numbers all over the place. Um, um, and how about outside? When you go outside into the street, um, outside your home, there might be a number on your front door. Or somebody else's front door, there might be a number on the bus as it drives past, or on the number plates and all the cars, and um, price tags in shops. Uh, there are numbers everywhere. Telephone numbers, numbers in web page addresses, uh, email addresses, everything. Numbers all over the place. And they're used in all sorts of ways. Now, do you have a favourite number? Never think of Rachel's nodding. <laughs> I also thought it was a bit weird, really, but lots of people do. Number four. Number four. Well, actually, I think my favourite number would be number seven, but I can't think why. Mm. Why, why would I like one number more than another? Um, and yet, we sometimes do. Isn't that strange? Um, but all our numbers are made up of ten different digits, which kind of makes sense because we've got ten fingers on our hands, and when we learn to count, we kind of figure that way. It's a little quick competition. How quickly can you find a number? If, if, if somebody shouts out a number between 1 and 10, how quickly can you get it on your fingers? So shout me a number, Simeon. 7. Uh, that. Can you, can you beat me? Can you be quicker? You, you shout, shout us another number and see, see, see if you can beat the fingers. 5. That's an easy one. 5. Um, okay. 9. Um, one more. Three. Yes. I'm glad you didn't do two. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> never mind. Just another thought. Um, two. Um, yeah. A quick number challenge. How quickly can you get count? Um, throughout history, numbers have sometimes had special meanings. Um, we're going to try to zoom in on my funny little chart here because I 
There are sort of I've had a look at, I think about some of the meanings that numbers might have for us. Number one, we have there, in some cultures, number one stands for the sun. Um, the greatest thing that we see in the sky. Um, if you are number one, perhaps you are the best at something. Um, you might get a gold medal. Um, the boss is sometimes thought of as number one at work. Um, number one sometimes stands for God. And because we believe there is one God. Um, number two, sometimes in some cultures it's a thought about love. Because two people love one another. Those are supposed to be wedding rings, they're not, not a very good picture, but two people get married. Silver, second. Number two, I suppose. You could carry on with that. But in some cultures, the moon is thought of as number two, because it's the second biggest thing in the sky, the second brightest thing in the sky. Number three, in many cultures, is, is a holy number, is a sacred number. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, think of the triangle. And of course, in, in Christianity, we think of the Holy Trinity. God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, what's going on here? You can draw in two dimensions, or you can draw in three dimensions. Three dimensions. Number four, slightly, in medieval times, people believed the world was made up of four things. Everything in the world was made up of either earth, air, fire, or water. And they called them the elements, until we discovered that there are lots more elements than that. Um, well, four, they used to think of the four corners of the earth. When people thought the earth was flat, though actually not many people ever did, really. Um, and even the Romans thought it was round, the Greeks thought it was round. Um, it was much later on that we decided it must be flat. But we thought of north, south, east and west, we think of four directions. Um, now this one, I'm not very good at drawing these things, what might I, I have there? The five senses. Five ways we touch with our hands, we smell with our noses, we taste um, with our mouths, we can hear with our ears, we see with our eyes. The five senses, um, five fingers on our hands. Six is a number you often find in nature. Um, every, a lot of things are six-sided uh, because of the way water is, is, I understand. That's supposed to be a very poor picture of a snowflake. Um, that, that in, in a bee, if you were to open up a beehive, you find the bees make hexagons everywhere, six-sided shapes. Ring. What's that? I thought it was a benzene ring. <laughs> Which one? Oh, oh, that's really... Good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very good. Um, six continents. Um, actually, there are seven if you count them, but only six of them have people living on them permanently. Um, Antarctica is a bit chilly. Um, in the Bible, in Genesis, it took God six days to create the world. So that was a, an important number to, to the Jews. But an even more important number to the Jews... Um, in the Bible was number seven, the Sabbath day, the holy day, when God rested. Um, what's that, Simi? Yeah, just before the service, I noticed that not only is the Sabbath the seventh day of the week, but it was, but it also, it's also got seven letters. Seven, seven has seven letters? No, no. Sabbath. Sabbath has seven letters. Ah, right, yes. Um, seven, seven seas, we used to think of the seven seas, all the oceans around the world. Seven is thought of as a lucky number in many cultures. Um, I read this one, I'm going to have to look this one up. Um, in Japan, it's a lucky number, number seven. At seven minutes past seven, on the seventh day of the seventh month of the seventh year of an emperor, seven runners will run 7,777 meters around the imperial palace because they believe it will bring good luck. Um, so, and in the Bible, actually, the number seven sometimes stands for God. It means completion, it means perfection. The seven spirits of God you read about in the book of Revelation. It's all a bit strange, but um, numbers sometimes have meanings for people. I get a bit lost in that as we go to eight and nine. I thought in Buddhism, eight is an important number. We have the eightfold path to enlightenment. Um, but Jesus had an eight with the attitudes. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are the pure in heart. He said, and there were eight blessings. Um, number nine. Why have I drawn that? What is that? It is supposed to be a cat. Why have I drawn a cat under nine? Nine lives. Yes, because people used to say, sometimes still do, a cat has nine lives, because it always seems to survive things that other creatures would, would, be, would 
die from. And sometimes if somebody's really happy, you say they're on cloud nine. All sorts of funny meanings to numbers. Now, I don't know what you make of all that, whether it's something you knew that or whether it's um, a bit strange or weird. Now, some people like maths, some people don't. I have here a rather funny sum and then a rather big number. There we are, let's put that down there for now. Um, here's my funny sum. 5 plus 2 divided by 5,000 equals 12. Is that right? Well, not in normal maths, it's not. But <laughs> can anyone think of a Bible story where that sum turned out to be right? Um, have a think, and if you can guess, maybe just type us a little comment or something. Um, we'll, get, we'll come back to it in a moment. Um, I, have a, I have a very big number here. 7 billion, 800 million, or thereabouts. I've got something I'd quite like to show you here. Um, I'm sure Rachel can show you. This is a worldometer population count of the world. I think it's a guess, really, because you can find several different ones of these, and they're all a little bit different. It's a guess of how many people there are in the world at this moment, and it's going up and up, slowly, slowly. 7.8 billion people in the world. Not liking focusing on that much. Isn't that an enormous number? 7.8 billion. Nathan, that's a bit of a guess. Um, how long would it take you to count up to 7.8 billion, do you think? Um, well, if you counted at one, one number per second, one, two, three, four, it would take, I, I worked this out yesterday, take you about 242 years to count up to 7.8 billion if you live that long. I think you might have better things to do than count if you've got 242 years. Um, so but if you wanted to say a one second prayer, for everybody in the whole wide world, it would take you over 240 years. How can God care for that many people? Well, somehow numbers aren't a problem for God. Did anyone get my son from a Bible story? No one's commented. No, it doesn't matter, but you might have got it anyway. Um, Jesus took five loaves, he added them to two fish, he divided them between 5,000 people and got 12 baskets of leftovers. We call it the feeding of the 5,000. Um, numbers aren't a problem for God. God made this whole universe. I'm going to go and sit myself down again for a minute anyway. God made this whole universe. Um, now, scientists estimate there is something there's somewhere between 100 billion and 400 billion stars in our galaxy. Um, quite how you can't get any closer than that, I don't know, that's quite a big range, isn't it? Somewhere between 100 billion and 400 billion stars just in our galaxy. Um, and in the universe, they reckon there's something like 2 trillion galaxies, so about 2,000 billion galaxies. Um, how vast must the mind of God be? The God who made that. Working out, caring for 7.8 billion people is like 2 plus 2 to God. Remember the words of Jesus. Not one of your 100,000 hairs will fall out of your head without God knowing about it. Not one sparrow dies without God caring. I tried to find out how many sparrows there are in the world, but again, no one knows. But they're pretty confident there are more sparrows than there are people. Um, and God knows every one of them. How much more important are you, Jesus said, than sparrows? I'd like to sing us a little song about that. It's called, funny enough, Little Sparrows. And it's a little kind of reflection on Jesus' words and some of the things he said just to help us think about how much God cares about us and about every little thing in this world. Little sparrows in the city, little sparrows in the trees, little sparrows 
in the country, little sparrows on the breeze. Little sparrows in the garden, little sparrows in the snow, little sparrows without number, if one falls, Lord, you know. Little sparrows in the shadows, little sparrows in the sun, little sparrows all around me, Lord, you made them, everyone. Little sparrows by the river, little sparrows on the hill, little sparrows for a penny, not one falls before your will. Heaven's children, do not worry, Jesus loves you, don't you know? You are worth much more than sparrows, he will never let you go. Consider now the ravens, they do not scatter seed. If you trust in God your Savior, you will never be in need. Consider now the lilies, they do not sow or spin, but God clothes them with his splendor, do not worry, trust in him. Heaven's children, do not worry, you are worth much more than birds, you are worth much more than flowers, do not fear, he is worth. Every hair it is numbered, from your head to your feet. Heaven's children, do not worry, he knows your every need. Heaven's children, learn a lesson from the sparrows in the trees, from the lilies and the ravens, you are worth much more than these. Heaven's children, loves you, don't you know? You are worth much more than sparrows, and will never let you go. Little sparrows in the branches, little sparrows on the wing, who of you, by worrying, can change a single thing? Little sparrows by the lakeside, Little sparrows by the streets, little sparrows in the sky, little sparrows in my dreams. So the next time you see a little sparrow or a bunch of little sparrows, just have a little think about what Jesus said. Seven point eight billion people in the world. That's a huge number. Um, but I put on my badge here, I don't know if you can see it. It says we got it at Port Merriam where the, the prisoner was filmed. Um, now some of the older ones might remember that. Um, number six, a man was um, trapped in this strange place, and he shouted out, I am not a number, I am a free man. I am just one of 7.8 billion people, but to God, I'm important, and so are you. I'm not just a number to God. We're going to use our dice now to say some prayers. We use numbers to play games. I have one more thing here, just a few suggestions, um, about what our numbers on a dice might mean. This is one might be a little way of praying. If you don't know what to pray for, and quite often I don't when I pray, I just want to be with God. Um, but you could throw a dice just to help you think and help your prayers. So we're going to roll a dice, and if we get a number one, we can think of what's one thing you want to say thank you for. Or perhaps you might think of one person who's on their own that you want to say a prayer for. Um, number two. Um, perhaps you can think about your best friend, the person you make a good pair with. Or perhaps you can think of two people who care for you, your, your mum or your grandma or um, things like that. Two good, I mean you could make up your own things on 
on this. Number three, perhaps we could pray that we'd know more about God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, number four, um, now, the four dots on the dice, like a sort of box, you could think of it as a building, maybe, maybe you could pray for your school, or your workplace, or your home, or, or, or perhaps you could think of the four distant, four directions, north, south, east, and west, and pray for people who are travelling, or people who live to the north of us, and you might pray for people in Sweden, or, or Norway, or something, in the south you might pray for people in Africa, East, you might pray for people in Israel or, or Japan or something. In West, you might pray for the people of America. Number five, one dot in the middle of all the others. You can think that we live in the middle of a community. Our house is in the middle, and there are think around us. There are shops, there are schools, there are businesses. There's lots of people around us. Perhaps we could pray for our community. Number six, the biggest number, perhaps you could think of the six continents, pray for all those millions of people in the world. I'm just going to roll the prayer, the, 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 well, would you like to roll the dice for us? I mean, he doesn't want to roll the dice. But you could roll the dice at home, wherever you want to sort of say a prayer. Well, go on then. I mean, he doesn't want to appear, does he? He wants to sort of hurl it. He just to, all right, there we go. No one now, I'm going to have to find that now. What is that? Five. Five. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Number four, let's say a prayer for our community. Lord, we pray for our parish, for Dacre, Hartworth, Darley and Thornthwaite and all the people that live in it. We pray for our schools and our homes, that you would be with us and in them. Hold on. No, no. okay. I've got to roll one myself. Three. I think it's a prayer God likes us to pray. Lord, help us to know you better, to love you more, be more part of our life. May we know you this Father's Day as Father. One more. Oh, we've got another three. You could say, you could say another prayer like that. Oh, God wants us to, to, <laughs> to pray number three. Yeah, or number one. One thing you want to say thank you for. Actually, I want to say thank you um, the last few weeks we've been praying for a young man called Irwin, who's had coronavirus very, very seriously. Um, he was released from hospital a day or two ago. So thank you, God, for all you've done for him and those who care for him. Well, perhaps let's pray for somebody, people who are on their own at the moment, who might be lonely or sad. We could even bring the number one in to pray for ourselves, little me, one among 7.8 billion that God cares for us. God help us be with us. Amen. You could extend that as long as you, you want. But perhaps you can make up your own meanings for the numbers. A different way to say prayers. I'm just going to finish with a simple prayer based on the words of Jesus. You said God was so great he knows about every single sparrow that falls. And then we'll finish with a, another song. Dear God, thank you that even among so great a number of people in this world, you see us and care about each one of us. Help us to remember that each of us is important to you. And so help us to treat others today in the same way because we know that they are important to you every one of them. They are special, they are not just a number. Amen. Right, this is a song that I didn't know before I started looking around for ideas for this service. Um, but it's an, old, it's an old family service song, so we've got that old, I think it's 1950s or 60s. Um, so some of the older folk might know it from when they were, were children. But it's called, There are Hundreds of Sparrows, Thousands, Millions. They're two a penny, far too many there must be. Hundreds of thousands, millions of sparrows, but God knows everyone, God knows me. And then it goes on, there are hundreds of flowers, but God knows all those. Hundreds of planets, thousands, millions. Hundreds of 
thousands and millions of children. God knows everyone. God knows me and you and all of us. of God, which passes all our understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. If you'd like to join us for a coffee and a chat over Zoom at 11 o'clock, you'd be most welcome. But otherwise, God bless you all.